It's a cold morning in the mountains of Appalachia. Matt and I have come over to Corey and Austin's. We're gonna work over here today with them, trying to help them get their garden ready for uh, spring of the year if it ever arrives. We're gonna help them tame their blackberry briars into shape and maybe do a few other things. Uh, their garden is not nowhere large as ours is. It's kind of spread out in different little areas. They have like a steep grade around their house, but we wanna help them uh, kind of get ready so that if warm weather ever arrives, they'll be ready to, to start planting. The last week has really made us all wonder if Old Man Winter's ever going to leave. We've had such cold temperatures. I think in the morning and the next morning, it's supposed to be down like 21, 20 degrees. We've had several, several hard freezes over the last week. So we've been running our little heater in the greenhouse pretty much nonstop and it died it died on us actually it didn't die it done i can't explain it done something to the electrical to the outlet that it was plugged up in so this morning before matt and i come over here we carried everything inside we just i just said instead of worrying about it let's just carry it all in the house so our whole house now has seedlings all over it uh, but hopefully this little cold spell has been going on over a week now hopefully this will be the last of it and once things warm back up in the next week or so we can move it all back to the greenhouse let it finish growing. We've made a lot of progress already. Matt and Austin got all the blackberries, the ones we were going to trail us, they got them up. Katie showed up to help, so Katie and Corey's over here on the bank. That's the worst part. It's kind of, over the years, whoever planted the stuff, it was blackberries and irises and daylilies and some blueberry bushes all mixed up together. And over the years, when no, no one really keeping them weeded out or, or cut back, it's just kind of all grown into a, a giant mess. So we've been working on it and we've made great progress. There was two blueberries that was dead. We had to pull them out. Uh, but And there's so many irises and daylilies. I, I know we damaged some, but Corey and Austin will still have plenty. Then there was some that had moved down into kind of the walkway. So we dug that up and Austin's replanting it in a different place. So we're making, making great progress. It's warmed up just a little bit, still really cold. I don't know I, could, I don't know what temperature it is, but the sun come out and that's helping some. The first 30 minutes was pretty brutal. Uh, my hands, my fingers, and my toes especially were cold, but, but things have warmed up now. In this part of the yard, Corey Nelson's got a beautiful red bud tree. I don't have any red buds at my house. I wish I did, but definitely it's in full bloom. It's just a small little tree, but... Uh, it's definitely red bud winter, so it's blooming right on time. Or maybe it's just the cold spells happening right on time. Corey and Austin really just have two kind of places in the front of their house here, one on each side of the entrance to their home. You can hear Katie fussing at Olive. Um, that's flat enough to actually plant anything. We kind of finished on the one side where all the blackberry briars are. And, it's, I told Corey, I said, I thought, I think that I live on a steep place until I come over here. And then I realized, uh, which we do live in just, ours is just as steep. It's just that our yard is much bigger and our yard's flatter. Corey's is not, not very flat. But this is where she's got, you may have watched Corey and Austin's video, where she's got two of the large um, metal beds, kind of like the ones me and Matt put together. A lot of people ask why ours didn't have the uh, bars in the middle to I can hear all of to help them be stable but it's because they're not near as wide as Corey's they didn't even come the beds we got didn't even come with metal bracing bars but you can kind of see Corey's in that one that her and Austin put up so we've took apart her green stalk she used it last year and it did really good we're just going to top it off with some extra compost or they are I'm not doing any work I'm talking but they're gonna they're gonna do that Austin went to get us all something to eat, so we're going to go in and get warm and have some dinner, and then we'll see what we can do after that.
Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't know why they would have done that. Unless they had a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Good, not even moving, but. Well, that one already open. I'll put a lid around that apple tree. How much? How much? It's probably already enough, I guess. Stop it. Are you sure? Yeah, Mama, I can't. I mean, hot chocolate on top of pizza? Probably a horrible idea. I'm gonna put marshmallows in this and enjoy it. Okay, maybe I could sand just a tiny bit more. Not much. I I didn't fill up as much as I thought. Just a little bit. Okay, that's already good. <laughs> Out I go. Okay, see ya. Thank you. One of the claim I picked up was that they were making Okay. So we've made it back from Corey and Austin's and exactly where we wanted to come is sit by the wood stove. Yeah. It's cold, cold March day and we're cold to the bone. I was. I don't know about Matt. I wasn't too cold. Yeah. I'm awful tired though. I'm gonna need a Dones. What's that Dones for your back? You remember yeah, those, the, the Dones, Dones commercial. Back pills. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember Dones. I ain't heard it, that in years. I wonder what it really was just Tylenol or yeah, aspirin, aspirin or aspirin something. Mm. We got a lot done though. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Earlier this week, when I did the test with Corey and Katie, one of the sayings Matt was a working. So we had a working at Corey's today, Corey and Austin's. Mm -hmm. All of us pitching in. What was the saying you said, Matt? Many hands make light work. Mm -hmm. So sure did today. We got a lot done. Yep. I think they're in good shape. The okay. little bird can take it from there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They were really excited too and pleased with everything we yeah. got done. Fed us pizza for for our dinner, and mm -hmm. so we enjoyed fellowshipping with them. After we eat, though, it was hard to go back out into the cold. <laughs> mm -hmm. and Katie said, "This pizza is making it hard to work." I said, "Yeah, it is." After I ate the pizza, I sat on the couch with Olive and got lazy. Yeah, I know. I just didn't want to go back out into the wind. It is howled. Yeah. Howled today. You can probably tell by looking at my hair. It was howling all day, whipping my hair around my face. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Your hair looks fine, dear. Yeah. Feels good though to be in out of the wind and the cold, but also good that we accomplished so much. Yeah, helped them along. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, always nice to help somebody, even if it's your own children. Mm -hmm. Makes you feel good. Of course, they said they'd repay us. They said they'd come over and help us fill the beds the on beds. the bank. She told them just come on over and we got till dark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't believe I got but it in me. I don't got it in me either, but it'll be cold mm -hmm. at dark for sure. It'll it be won't a, be right here. No, it won't be right here. It's going to be another very cold night. Yeah. That's the way March is. Yeah. It's chancy. Might be warm and warm might days be, and cold days. Yeah, warm days and cold days. But it won't be long. It'll be blistering hot for good for months, and I don't like that either. And you'll be missing the March wind. Yeah, I will be. Yeah. 
around Corey and Austin's house. Of course, it's I think it was built when 1980, mm -hmm. so long time before either one of them were even born. But there's some remnants of stumps around the front and well, most I don't know yeah, about it's all the way back. around the house. Yeah, yeah it's been well, back too. Yeah. Anyway, where and I don't know. I mean, I'm sure those trees weren't cut down in the 80s, but between <coughs> then and now, they've been cut down. Some of them would have been really close to the house, too. I guess that's why mm -hmm. somebody took them down. Yeah, they may have died or tops died in them yeah. or something. They, they had them cut. But they did not cut them all the way <laughs> down low. They mm -hmm. left what? That one that we... That one they cut, they left about, about a foot sticking up. Yeah, about a foot sticking up. Mm -hmm. And it was just in the way and kind of rotted on top and you couldn't plant. So we wanted to, Corey really wanted to take care of that one. So Matt and Austin did with the chainsaw, but while y'all were working on it, I was thinking the miracle of a chainsaw, how fast it makes that job. It had been hard a long time ago with axe and the go devil and wedges. Yeah. Yep. You it's think about tough. the old timers, I always think I can never be around sawdust or cutting trees that I don't think about my Papa Wade and I smell sawdust, I immediately think of him. But I you know, think about them in the days when there was no chainsaws. Mm-hmm. Crosscut saws. Yeah. And axes. Would have been some hard work. That's I mean, I'm, hard work, it's hard work with a chainsaw, oh, yeah, but, but with that that's why slow I'm, and tedious. That's why I'm people tough. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It just is. Yeah, I know. When Papa Wade, and I don't know what year this was, but Pap was just a boy, finally decided it was when, uh, and they didn't call them chainsaws, they called them power saws. Right. But uh, when they first got into this country, as Pap would say, and people started talking about them, him and this other family, that the man, Papa worked with that man, and I want to say that it was the Dockeries, but I might be wrong, it may have been somebody else. Anyway, but they decided finally they would go in together and they would get one on credit and then they would you know they'd be able to work so much faster they could make the money back and pay pay it off real quick and since they were working together it would just be both of them <coughs> but the very first night they got it i don't remember now if it was i've wrote about it on the blind pig and acorn i probably tell it on there but if it was paps if they kept it at papa's house or at the other man's house but it was on the porch and it come a storm and lightning struck it. Can you imagine? <laughs> Golly. And Pap said he'd never forget. They were all just devastated. Mm -hmm. And the women was all saying, I told you, I told you not to get it on credit. You didn't need those newfangled things. I told you. And yeah. Papa and the man was saying, we're ruined, we're ruined. And um, so finally, after, you know, what can you do? There's nothing you can do. They decided they'd take it back to the chainsaw place and mm -hmm. wherever they would got it and just see if they could sell it for parts mm -hmm. you know and maybe they would you know they'd still have to pay off the bill but maybe that would help a little bit mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. thankfully when they took it back because it was on credit it had some sort of little insurance that they were paying on it too so if they didn't have to pay they got a new one in other words the insurance paid mm -hmm. for it and uh, Daddy said, Pap said, you better believe nobody left that chainsaw outside for a long time. <laughs> nobody left it outside. Of course, uh, after that, Pap always went on to have many, many chainsaws over the years. But, mm -hmm. yeah. It was miraculous, though, for a man like that that was in the logging business pretty much his whole life and went from, like Matt said, using the cross-cut saws and the axes and all that. And, and then to be able to go to a power saw. Yeah, that would have been quite a change. Yeah. Yeah. Just imagine how much faster you could have done your work. Yeah. The thing about it is, though, probably Back then, if you'd have had a breakdown of the saw, then it would have been harder to get parts, and it would have been oh, yeah, harder sure. to get somebody to work on it. Or they may have probably worked on it herself, most likely, but it would still have been hard to get parts, and you'd have to wait a long time because you'd have mm -hmm. to order them through the mail, and yeah. you know, it ain't like getting online and ordering stuff. Right? Yeah, or even like where we live, going to the chainsaw shop, <clears throat> and then they only had the one saw between them. Yeah. And, I mean, that would have been. They Even though they had jumped 
forward quite a bit. To us, to it us, still it would still so, be a headache. Yeah, it you know? still seems so so slow right. and sad. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're spoiled. Yeah, you've got how many chainsaws? Uh, three or four. Yeah, we're spoiled. Yeah, I don't even use them much. Yeah, getting too old to use them, ain't you? I'm a, just a little bit afraid of them. You didn't used to be. No, I didn't used to be, but the older you get, though, that stuff you start thinking about. I ain't, I'm not. Not necessarily afraid of them, just much, much more cautious than I used to be. I did, used to not have any caution. You used to like tie one to you and climb up a tree and start at the top. And yeah. Like the one big pine you did out here. Yeah, I wouldn't do that now. Yeah. We always, everybody in our family always teased that Papa Wade liked nothing better to chop down a tree. I mean, he'd just done it for so long. That was just one of his favorite things was to saw down a tree. Mm -hmm. Of course, we were mostly just joking about it, just making, teasing him about it. It was kind of the truth, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah. You think this will be our last cold spell? I mean, this severe it won't be the last cold spell. We've still got dogwood winter and blackwood, uh, blackberry winter to go. Yeah, we some more cold but weather. I hope no more in the 20s. You probably will. It's just mid March. I know, but good grief. There's been some really cold nights the last week, though. Mm -hmm. And continue for the next few days, too. It just seemed worse because it was so warm up that's, prior to that. Yeah, that's what Corey said. She said, I said, Well, you knew it was going to get cold again. She said, I know, but it's just so hurts your feelings because it was <laughs> so warm for the days when you're sitting outside on the deck eating and talking and feeling the sunshine and then back to the 20 degree weather. Yeah. Mm. Makes fire feel good though. Mm-hmm. Thanks thankful for the fire. Mm -hmm. A lot of the people that uh, are loggers in this part of the country, as Pap would say, in this part of the state, a lot of them are um, cutting trees that will then be turned into chips that would go to the mill in Canton. And when was it last week or the week before they announced that they're going to close, which is so sad for especially the people of Canton, all the people that work there. I mean, not just people that live in Canton work there, in Waynesville and all the surrounding areas. There's probably people that drive a far <coughs> piece to work there. Yeah. I think how many people, 1,100, 1,200 people? Uh, 1300, 1300 maybe I'm so sorry for them and their families uh, it's just so sad and then it does it goes even beyond that when you think about the chip trucks and the loggers mm -hmm. and the people like that and even other contractors that are you know contracted by the mill it's yeah, that construction will, contractors uh, yeah when Matt and I was uh, from Dayton he worked in the mill but he didn't work for at that time it would have been champion he didn't work for the mill he worked for what was their name uh, B E and K B -E -N -K. construction, and they were in there a lot working. They were in there all the time. All the time, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's those kind of things, and uh, then those people that that's every day they just went there to work. Mm -hmm. um, my heart just breaks for them. Yeah, and that's a, you know that that many people out of a job in a small town is, is devastating. Yeah. The whole, basically, the whole county. Uh, economy revolves around that place. Yeah. And it's going to be tough. It's going to be so tough. Right. I'm so sorry for them. Yeah, and that mill's been in operation for like 115 years. Yeah, a lot of people in Matt's family have retired from there, including Papa Tony. And yeah, my daddy and both of my grandpas. Yep. Lots and lots of people I know and have known. Uncle Tex and yep. Aunt Jimmy. and mm -hmm. Yeah, lots of different people that that's, I mean, that meal is what raised Matt, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, because that's where your daddy worked. That's yep. what, yeah. So sad. Yeah. I wish they could figure out somebody could buy it or they could figure out how to keep it going. I mean, I know nothing about any of it. I'm just a bystander wishing it hadn't happened for all those families, but I'm, I'm really sorry for them. Yeah. We wish there was some way somebody could swoop in and purchase it and keep it going or... I don't know what the answer is, but yeah. sure am sorry for them. And 
and it is like Matt said totally for Haywood County just be devastating but even you know we're two hours away it will affect people in our area too when you think about the loggers that yeah there's lots and, and lots the chip of, truck lots of chip drivers here that, 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 right, that they drive every day and, haul out there yeah. and sell their chips right so mm, pulp wood cutters mm -hmm. that's basically what papa was a pulp wood cutter mm -hmm. so so for all those years that um, Matt's talking about Pretty much, even then, it the con it affected the economy in other areas like right, here, right? right. Yeah. yeah. Well, Matt did work in the mill. Of course, he wasn't, as I said, working for the at that time was champion. <coughs> wasn't working for them, but uh, for the construction company. What did you work like? Um, graveyard or something? Well, it was a. Uh... It would have been considered a graveyard shift, but it was like seven at night to seven in the morning, but it was seven days a week, no days off. That was for like a, they were doing something special? Yeah, it was a... a not a shutdown, but... It wasn't a shutdown, it was a, a rebuild of one section of the mill, the what they call the old bleach line, and they completely tore it out and completely built it back because it, it had been in operation so long, it was just so dilapidated. So that's what the company that I worked for did was tore out everything and, and then rebuild it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they had all kinds of different, within that company had different, uh, they had electrical, they were electrical contractors, plumbers, uh, pipe fitters, uh, mechanical, just all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I was on the, I, went, I was a welder when I worked there. Mm -hmm. Had lots of welders hired and lots of pipe fitters and mm -hmm. instrument people and that sort of thing. And they rebuilt that whole that whole section of the of the mill. Mm -hmm. Hard work, hard dirty work. Gosh yeah, hard dirty work and long days and no days off ever about every fourth week you'd get one uh, it was like a Saturday night or a Sunday night off. I can't remember mm -hmm. which one it was. That's been 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. But you'd get one night off, and then you'd go right back and work another 30 or 40 days straight of 12-hour night shift. And I mm -hmm. couldn't sleep in the day good. And <laughs> that was... It was really good money, though. Yeah, it was good money for yeah. the time. Uh, yeah. And you didn't have any time to spend it. Because <laughs> you either was working or sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. So. You get paid and it just sat in the bank and that was good and I was young, uh, but that was that was one good aspect of it. But it was yeah. a lot of uh, long, hard work nights. Mm. Matt come home telling me tales about the mill. I never did get to go on a tour of it. I always wanted to. When I worked at Lake Logan, that was something they offered, not for employees necessarily, but for sometimes groups would come there to, to have their meetings and they would take them on a tour. <sighs> And I always wished I could go go it's, along and see it, see the inside. Absolutely of it. a fascinating thing. To, yeah. I mean, if you, you know, if you're mechanically inclined or have a mechanical uh, mind, it's a fascinating thing to see. I mean, it was actually uh, just a marvel of, of how everything worked together. You mm -hmm. know, and of course I'm interested in that kind of stuff. But it, it was they, it was really something to see. Mm -hmm. Matt grossed me out because my biggest fear is rats, and he'd come home tell me about the big rats he's seen in there. Big, big, big um, rats. One of them one time was in some kind of elevator or something, wasn't it? It, it opened it, up. Yeah, it, it wasn't on it, but it was when the elevator stopped and the door opened, it was standing in front of it like it was somebody about to get on, but <laughs> it was just sitting on its haunches like a dog, and it was big. Oh, gosh. Yeah, it was... Freaky. He was like, I won't get off here. <laughs> but that was, I mean, you saw that quite often. Big, big, big rats. Yeah, I couldn't have stood that. Mm -hmm. Probably worse at night when there wasn't, was there as many people? I guess they work like a full shift, oh, the 24 mid, uh, hours. Yeah, it's, but it's it's more more busy during the day. There's actually more people there during the day, oh. I thought, I mean, I think. But... Uh, it didn't seem as bustling of a night. Well, I mean, even, probably where y'all were at too. It was there wasn't no people working there because you were working there. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. And then I got I got hung on an elevator one night, and of course that was back before cell phones. Yeah. 
didn't have a radio. Yeah. Uh, and there was constantly chlorine leaks. And we had to wear respirators on us at all times, along with all our other safety gear. And I got stuck on it. And the elevator wasn't like an elevator in a building. It was a uh, like an open, like a metal cage. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can see out all sides of it, but the thing just stopped, and I didn't like elevators anyway. Mm -hmm. I, I, back then, and I'm still a little bit that way. If there's stairs, I'll take the stairs. Yeah, you always, Matt always takes the stairs. You know, yeah. just because, and it keeps you in good shape too. Anyway, but that thing got stuck, and they're just they're either just had been a chlorine leak or. There was one directly after, and I was on the thing kind of in a panic, and I don't remember, it's been so long ago, what caused it. And I, don't, I wasn't on it for very long, I don't think, but at some point the thing went back to operating or somebody, I don't remember what happened, but I ended up getting off of it, and I didn't want to get back on it, because it that wasn't the first time it had done that. It just, that was the first time I was on it, but I was on it by myself, and... I don't remember if it had an alarm button on it or a way to to get a hold of somebody and let them know you was stuck. Yeah, I don't remember none of that, but I'm sure they would nowadays. Oh yeah, now I'm sure it's come a long way since yeah. then. Yeah. But I remember. I don't know if it's the same night, maybe in the next night that there what there was a, a train car. See, the train the train tracks went all the way into the mill. Mm -hmm. And there was a, a a big chlorine tanker car that leaked, and they had people, safety people, that walked around all the time with monitors, and then there was fixed monitors all over the place, and there's all the time going off. And if it went off, then you had to evacuate. And this time it was a, a pretty serious leak, and you could actually see it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could see the haze in the air, and chlorine gas is very dangerous. Very dangerous. You can't breathe that stuff. And they give us these little respirators to wear, and they're just to escape in. They're not something you can just hang around in. Right. It's just a little charcoal filter. Uh, I remember we had to put actually put them in our mouth, and then try to get out of there. Mm -hmm. And you know, and it's dark. And but we got out, and they sent the people in there that fixes all that, and then they sent the people in to monitor it and be sure the air quality was good, and we was, uh, it was a couple of hours before we went back in there. Mm -hmm. But it was <laughs> kind of hard to make yourself go yeah, back in a place like that, because so. it, it, I mean, it happened all the time. Right, yeah. See that little red thing right up there above the light, yeah. above the clock? That, yeah. That's actually that filter, That uh, that's actually that uh, respirator. Oh, wow. Yeah, I kept it all those years. It, huh? yeah. I've had that thing That's for neat. many years. Yeah. So Papa Tony, what did he do? He was an electrician. Yeah, he was an electrician. The whole time he worked there, was he an electrician? Uh, no. He, I don't know what he did before he was an electrician, but once he was employed there, then you could apply to get into the, the electrical, what they call it, to, to become a journeyman or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's what he did and went through the went through all he had to get through to become an electrician and then once he did and that would have been in the mid mid to late seventies I guess. And then from that point on until he retired he was an electrician. Mm -hmm. And he mostly worked days or did he work all shifts when you was young? He worked a lot of double shifts when I was young. Uh, he'd worked days in three eleven both, lots of days. Which would be about a sixteen hour day. Just for extra money. Yeah, and then uh, I don't know if it's so much for that, or if, if they, I don't know if it's shorthanded. I don't know what. A lot of times it was uh, they'd have shutdowns, and he'd be required to do that. Mm. But yeah, he he worked a whole lot of those double shifts. Mm. He was pretty well known in there, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was pretty. Uh, Colorful, <laughs> and still is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He had a lot of a lot of buddies and yeah. lots of jokes and pranks on each other and tall tales and all that. Oh yeah, there was a lot of uh, yeah. The camaraderie in there amongst those people was pretty pretty thick. Yeah. and that's good. Yeah, oh yeah. That's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. You don't seem it's, you don't seem to be like that much anymore anywhere you work. Yeah. 
uh, where you got to be so careful about everything. They teased each other oh, unmercifully yeah. and oh, played yeah. jokes yeah. and pranks. And, yeah, and that just yeah. helps the day go by yeah. easier and quicker. But it's but made real friendships too. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And that's that's how it's supposed to be, you know. Yeah. But as time goes on, there's less and less and less of that. Yeah. Uh, which is not a good thing in my mind, but what do you do? You know? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well. Everybody looks back and likes it like it used to be. But there ain't nothing you can do about it. No, I know, and I think. I mean, and I'm you the know, world's worst for that. <laughs> well, I'm. I am too. Uh, but you know, it's like the old saying or whatever about each generation does that. You know, uh, your daddy and pap done it too. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Things just ain't like they used to be. I always chuckle. I guess I'm right at that stage or right at that age to where I catch myself saying, well, back when I was young, <laughs> then yeah. I think, my gosh, did I actually just say that? <laughs> but I do it. I know. And I, I think it. I do, too. So when I, guess I was, I'm, when I guess I was I'm young, there. it wasn't like that. Or when I was a kid, <laughs> right. we did we did it this way. Yeah. Or we didn't do that. Right. Nobody my, done back that. Back in my day. Yeah. You know. <laughs> but, I, yeah, we're there, I we're guess. We're there, yeah. I mean, we ain't real old yet, but we ain't young either. No, middle-aged, so. Yeah. That's, that's funny to think that way. Yeah, we'll be the ones telling our grandkids what is the old joke about, like, I had to walk five miles to school and it was uphill both yeah, ways. Yeah, uphill both ways, yeah. <laughs> All that. And they'll be going, what? Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Oh. But I hate the place is closing. That's a oh, that's I a do bad too. thing. Breaks my heart for all the people, all the families. Like Matt said, so many of his family. And then when we lived out there, well, Matt more than me, but even the time I lived out there, it's just like that meal touched every life. Yeah. I mean, I I worked when I lived there. I worked for Champion, which is not who owns the meal now. I just didn't work at the meal. I worked at Lake Logan, but it just touched so many lives there, pretty much everything. And Man, it's just, you know. even aside from the devastation of the unemployment, I mean, it's just such a fixture itself, yeah. you know, yeah. and for that to be gone and not be there anymore is not in that capacity. I don't know what they'll do with the place, yeah, but it's I just a, either. when you think about that town, that's what you think of. Oh, yeah, you know? definitely. Um, when and a lot of people don't like it. A lot oh, of people, that's true. A lot, a lot of people, people don't, don't like, like it, it because yeah. of the smell. Right. Um, yeah. They don't like it because of the, uh, yeah. the they 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 use the river water and treat it and put it back in. And the people downstream from that's been fighting it for years and years. Yeah. I mean, there are people that don't like it. And will probably be happy that it's not there anymore. But we're not one of those. Yeah. I mean, it's a that place fed lots of people yeah. and it helped raise lots and lots and lots of families and it raised you i mean yeah. like i said bought your shoes and your clothes and fed you yeah. and, and yeah. regardless of the environmental impact i mean that's an important thing to have a place in your hometown where that can where you can do that yeah. you know yeah when uh before i ever met matt and how i did meet matt is pap's sister uh, also lives in canton and so when I was a little girl and we would travel out there, of course, we would, all of us kids, would be like, that smell, that smell. And even then, Pap would say, that is the smell of money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> those are those are good paying jobs. You right. know, there is none in Brasstown like that right. where I can make that money, but those are right. those are good paying jobs. And they were. The smell good, of money. Good paying jobs and they had yeah. good benefits and insurance and all that. Yeah. And it was a, it was good a, retirement for your daddy. I right. don't know as time went on if that was so right. for the after champion was no longer. Right. Um, that I don't know, we don't know as much about it, of course, then, but mm -hmm. but very sad for that community to lose all those jobs at one time. Right, and, and, and there's a great many uh, skilled labor jobs in there, you know, yeah. and there's also uh, uh, just not really assembly jobs, but uh, what you'd call it, but the, the, the skilled labor jobs is, I mean, that's just bad for, for that to be gone. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're the higher paying jobs, but they should be because the people that do them have learned the trade and learned that skill. 
and then when that closes, it it, it makes it, it it's not easy to find that again. Mm -hmm. In other words, yeah. especially without moving. Yeah, yeah, and then you think about well, if will it be a mass exodus, people moving and leaving, will that affect the county? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, all there's so many different things to think about. Yeah. We're just so sorry for them. Yeah. So sorry for them. Yeah. you a cup holder do you yeah it worked out pretty good huh like pap i may just leave that hanging there yeah that's what he would do yeah he left one hanging about everywhere you went yeah. he had something hanging yeah. and would be handy yeah he always had them hanging on the creek down there when we had the big garden yeah yeah and that's yeah. what he drank his water with out of the creek yeah he'd hang one down there he hung stuff he's afraid he'd need something he'd be, if it was i mean some stuff he kept in the house but thinking about parks and stuff he'd hang it in a tree outside the tree somewhere then the tree would grow up around it and <laughs> capture it yeah he'd say you might need that you don't never know mm -hmm. there'd be wire and stuff hanging around his garden yeah. and trees and he'd make his own little duster for the beans or whatever you'd see one of them hanging around yeah, it's usually a pork and bean can yeah, or something, something with a bunch like of nail that. holes in the bottom and you could Put your seven dust in it and shake it on your plants, and it worked good. Yeah. Yeah, he was notorious for stuff like that. When me, I guess it's when me and Matt was building our house, and of course we just slaved over, or I did. Matt didn't care, but it was like, oh, how do I want it to look, and all that. And looking back, I was so silly. It's just a ranch house, so it's nothing nothing special but but you know you're really excited and thinking about the rooms and where you want the bathrooms and where you want the bedrooms and all that kind of stuff but I remember uh, and after that we teased about him all we still do me and Matt uh, that Pap what he said he said you know I don't I wouldn't worry about none of that because if I had to do over because he had built his house too when I was probably about five years old um, he said if I had it to do over I just build one giant room and not put no walls in it and we were like what <laughs> he said that's all i do yeah. he said you just pile it up anyway yeah you just pile it around the edges of the you know the outside walls yeah, he's, he said, he's, what difference does it make there's a little truth to that yeah, you just no. fill it up and pile it up till you can't get around in yeah, it anyway he said you just file you just pile it up anyway i wouldn't have no walls i just have one big open room <laughs> That's what I do. Yeah, I always thought that was funny. Yeah, we still laugh about it. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I'm not doing that, Daddy. Yeah. So, <laughs> so let's think of something else. Mm -hmm. Help me figure this out. Yeah. Was it our house or somebody else's house that he drew the thing out at the building place? No, it's this one. It's this one. That was in the days when uh, you could still, like, I don't know, can you build your own house today or you have to have contractors or uh, license or something? They, I think you probably can, but it, it they've made it harder, yeah. and they you know they really really want you to hire a contractor, yeah. and they want I mean it's just the hardest way you can possibly and the most money yeah. possibly that you can spend. That's the way they want so, you. So this was before then when you could still build your own house, obviously because we did. But it but I don't know they give Daddy a hard time when him and he went with Matt to go down there to pull the permit, they, and they wanted a they wanted a blueprint. They I wanted a blueprint. A drawn. Uh, yeah. Uh, like engineered, from an architect. An engineered yeah. blueprint. Yeah. Of course, we didn't have one, no. and we wasn't going to get one, right. and we didn't need one. No, right. We drew it out, just what we wanted, and we knew we could build what we drew. Yeah. But they wouldn't sell him a permit on that because it wasn't uh, engineered prints. And, and the lady was real rude to him. Yeah, she the was pretty. The secretary she was, or whatever she, she was. She was not very nice, no. Yeah, and so he jerked out a napkin or something? Yeah, it was like a napkin from Hardy's. <laughs> <laughs> and just sketched it out there and said, "There you go. There's our blueprint." And of course, she didn't take it, and she got she got mad about that. And he he finally figured he wasn't getting anywhere with her, so he got up and told her, "said Well, we're uh, we're starting that house today, and if you'd like to sell us permit, come on up. But we're going right now, and we're going to start that house this day today. Good afternoon." And he left, or he started to leave. And I think the guy that ran, actually was over that department kind of heard this going on, and he came out there and he knew Pap yeah, a little bit. And he went out there and got him said, "Come in here, and let's talk about this." And he came in there, and then that guy made sure he got the he permit. Got the permit yeah. So, yeah. yeah. 
But, he'd but they built, ain't no need in having to go through all he'd that. He built lots of houses. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just going to be a simple house. It wasn't like it was going to have three stories and scissor trusses and all that kind of stuff yeah. or whatever. Yeah, you know, yeah. blueprints is fine. Yeah. But they're very expensive to have drawn, and, and we were trying to build a house. You know, we had to. We were broke. Yeah. We didn't have no money. We didn't have nothing. Yeah, we we, no we were trying to do it as yeah. cheaply as we could. And it was a very simple house that Pap had yeah. built over and over and over. Uh, there's how many? Well, now Steve's wasn't there. Well, yes, yeah, Steve's was mm -hmm. there too. Mm -hmm. So there's one, two, three, three mm -hmm. already here, exactly mm -hmm. like this one that Pap had built, mm -hmm. not counting the ones in other areas right. of the county. Right. Um, but three just in a row down through there that he had already built. And this one was, it was going to be just like those. So. Well, you know, people's got yeah. the. Uh, mistaken notion that you can't you just can't do it without that well yeah you can yeah a <clears throat> hundred years ago the landscape had houses all over it and there wasn't no blueprints drawn there oh, right. and the yeah. vast majority of those houses are still standing yeah, yeah. Well, without all, blueprints all without inspections without any of that right. stuff they build it with what they had the way they yeah. had to do it and how they still stand as far as i know all yeah. the ones pat built still stand yeah. unless they burnt down i don't yeah. know of any that's burnt down but especially the the three, like I said, yeah. right down through and there. All that, and, and every one. bit of that and all that put together is what drives the cost of housing so high that young people can't afford to do it without yeah. going into massive debt and they work their whole life trying to pay their house off and it shouldn't be that way. Yeah. And if you can do it yourself like we did, and we, we, you know, we built this house very economically. And for it's what not we, fancy no, at all. But I for mean, what we have in it, yeah. as opposed to what it's actually worth now, is, is tremendous. Yeah, right. And we were lucky we had Pap that yeah. knew, it, knew how to do it, right. and he didn't charge us a dime. Right. So, actually gave us the land yeah, and didn't gave charge us, us anything. Yeah, land, didn't charge nothing. Uh, so we were very lucky. But that's how I learned was on this house. Uh, and now I will forevermore have that in my, my mind. I know how to do this stuff. Yeah. Well, you built more houses after yeah, this but one, too. But that's, that's good to learn that stuff, you know. And Matt to, did have to eventually get his contractor's license because that come about, so... Yeah. So the houses you built definitely were under a contractor's license. Right, yeah. right. Oh. And I still have them. I don't know how long I'm going to have them, but I still have them. Yeah. Yeah. Had them for a long, long time. Don't use them, but I keep them up just because they were they were kind of hard to get. You <laughs> had to were, jump through a lot of hoops. They were very and hard to get. It was, you know, it was just aggravating, and I've kept them up. But now they're now they're getting kind of hard to keep up, and I'm a little bit ornery as far as. Uh, having to do things differently and things that I think are, are not a lot of common sense, I don't have any tolerance for. No, no. So, That's another thing that happens when you get older. And it happens by the day with me, I think. Yeah. I mean, I lose, I, lose, I mean, you know, I try not to be that way, but yeah. stuff that's just what I, what I call just plumb stupid. I ain't got any tolerance for it, and I don't want no part of it. And that goes back to what we were saying earlier. When I was young. <laughs> back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you warmed up. I'm burning alive. You're burning alive. Yeah. 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 Well, now that we've warmed up, I guess we'll head upstairs and see what else, see if we can get ourselves up the steps after our hard day of work at Corey's. Yeah, I'm going to go cook. Yeah. Matt's going to cook my supper. <laughs> Late too. Yeah, he may cook it. May decide to eat something easy and you cook for me tomorrow. I'll cook it anyway. It won't take long to cook. It'll yeah. take longer to prepare it than it will to cook it. That's true. It'll be pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Matt's gonna cook grilled chicken and vegetables and probably rice. Mm -hmm. That's be quick, pretty quick. Yeah. Pretty quick. You got any broccoli? No broccoli. You like broccoli? I do. No broccoli. Sorry. Okay. Well, I'll make do. Even though the whole plan is totally destroyed now, I'll try to, I'll try to <laughs> rake not. it all up and put it back <laughs> together. Not. It was it was centered on broccoli. It was, I've thought all day the, the broccoli <laughs> is the key to what I'm doing this evening. Oh, sorry. Let me call around see if I can borrow some from somebody. No. You got any broccoli I can borrow? Yeah. Please loan me some broccoli. Matt's melting down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As always, we thank you for dropping by to visit with us. As we, you know, I even feel like today we were celebrating Appalachia. Of oh, yeah. course, we were um, out in the 
wonderful outdoors, enjoying the cold wind and all that, but helping Austin and Corey get to where they can grow food at their house. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. But also a real part of Appalachian culture is helping your family like that. So I feel like all day long we've been uh, celebrating Appalachia while we were helping Corey and Austin. Mm -hmm.